So with Power of the Elements being the most anticipated set of the year, I figured it would be a good idea to dive into which could be the best potential hand traps of the format. With Gigantic Splite locking both players from summoning non-level 2 or Link to a rank 2 monsters, and with Splite Starter being able to search your cards on draw phase, both Nibiru and Joel and Logbird just aren't really good contenders against Splite. Of course, Valor, Imperm, Ash, all of those cards can have decent utilities, but if your opponent drew like an other extender, then it can make it so that these hand traps never really did anything to begin with. And you may also be very frustrated when you draw these kind of hand traps for turn, except maybe for Imperm, which is actually still pretty good to draw, as your 6 card can kind of act like a Forbidden Chalice, although you do have to take into consideration the fact that the Toad cannot be targeted by card effects when it is being pointed to by Splite Elf. So yeah, therefore, you don't really want to play low impact one for one hand traps that rely on very specific timings to be you know decent because you might have little to no control over that sometimes. Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries is technically a card that shuts down multiple plays just on its own and is very interesting has a lot of nice applications but I do believe that it deserves its own video. And you preferably want to play hand traps that uh, can be used at any time that don't suck at duplicates that you can actually draw for turn and that makes your opponent permanently lose a play, even though he might have a potential extender, that would replace the fact that maybe your monster got its effect negated, and you know, you hard drew the monster that you were gonna search anyways. And that's the reason why I believe that the main MVP of the next format will actually be DD Crow. First of all, it fulfills all the criterias I just listed, but also, if you're playing against Splite or Tier Laments, regardless of which deck you're facing, DD Crow is actually pretty insane going first and second, because against Splite, you can banish the Ronin Toad in, so that your opponent basically permanently loses access to Toad, because he's never really gonna get the second monster that will be a frog at level 2 Aqua Monster. Aqua Monster, Jesus, Aqua Monster. <laughs> and also, against the Tier Elements deck, it's actually really good, because when your opponent activates the effect of a Tier Element monster in the grave, in order to fuse and you DD Crow it, the effect to fuse will simply not happen because the Tier Elements monster do have to successfully shuffle themselves into the deck in order to fuse. And even going second against Splite, if you actually draw the card for turn and you couldn't use it on the Ronin Toad, and you can still use it on the Toad when your opponent is trying to revive it back with the Splite Elf. And of course, the card is not once per turn, is a dark attribute, so you can excavate it off of Chaos Ruler, you can banish it for whatever purpose, and of course it can be searched by Flunderies Robina, which can be... Useful if you're still trying to play that deck, but if you are, what the hell are you doing? So in conclusion, yes, I do believe that DD Crow is actually very logical to play in the upcoming metagame because of, again, all the applications I just listed. But if you have some other thoughts or opinions or whatever, please let us know in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.